So once upon a time, there was a great kingdom. And in the center of the kingdom, there was a king and there was a queen. And the good news about these people is they were sweet and generous and kind. But at night, when they went to bed, there was a grief that hung between the two of them. And it was just very simple. The queen could not conceive a child. So one day she's walking through the deep old forest. And from that forest came an old woman. And she spoke to the young woman and said, why are you grieving? There's something melancholic in your heart. And the queen told her what the trouble was. And the old woman said this, very simple thing to do. You need to speak your desire. You need to speak your longing into a little cup, just like that. And tonight at dusk in the northwest part of the garden, breathe your desires and longings into the cup, give it language, and then flip the cup onto the dark soil. In the morning, when you come back, pull the cup up, there will be two flowers. One is red, the other is white. Whatever you do, said the old woman, eat the white flower, not the red. And with that, she's gone. I don't know why it is in our life we do this, but we do it. Even with the best advice in the world, as her hand moved for the white flower, it could not help but flip in the air to the red and she guzzled the red flower down. Instantly, the queen recognizes she is pregnant. There is some spark of light in the lonely croft of her hips and a baby is on the way. Nine months pass. It's a dark night, it's a rainy night, and they're in a, a little tower. There's the midwife, the doulas, the old women that are singing the 10,000 secrets that need to be in a woman's bloodstream as she's giving birth. And as she pushes the baby into this world, what scuttles out between her legs is not a child at all, it's a small black snake, what we call a worm. Now the old doula sees this freakish little thing, grabs it and throws it out of the window. Seconds later comes a beautiful little baby boy. From that point onwards, no one says a damn word about the snake. It simply never happened. Now the other boy grows up and he's healthy, he's in great shape. And he goes out on a horse looking for a woman to find as his bride. As he's moving through the forest, he comes to a crossroads. And at this crossroads, rearing in front of him is this vast black serpent, steam from its nostrils, and it says this, older brothers marry first. He turns on his horse, he tries to go some other way. All day long, every crossroads he comes to, the serpent appears, older brothers marry first. So that night he goes back to his mum and his daddy, the king and queen, and he says, is there anything you didn't tell me about my birth? And they say, no, well, let's go and see the old midwife, see if she remembers anything. And the midwife indeed recalls that, well, there was the strange incident with the black serpent that we hurled into the forest. Clearly, this being has grown in strength, grown in power, and now is, you know, looking, looking to marry. And this is an amazing moment in the story because the king and the queen said this, we must make a room in our home for the serpent. We don't try and have it executed or assassinated or brought down by soldiers and mercenaries. We have to bring it closer. And the king and the queen sent the most beautiful of minstrels and musicians and poets to actually court the snake into the castle and they send out word all over the kingdom that indeed there is a prince looking for a bride. Now, for a while, many women come to marry the prince, not really knowing who he actually is. One by one by one, they're eaten. One by one by one, every morning there's nothing but bones on the floor. So after a while, the castle gets a reputation. They call it the place you go into and never come out. So the king and queen are surprised 
when word comes from the edge of the kingdom that there is one woman still prepared to marry this beast. But she says this, I want one year and one day to prepare. And they say, well, of course, whatever you want. Now you should know that this young woman was the daughter of a shepherd and she was very friendly with the forest. The forest would speak to her. So after she'd said she was going to do this, she was wandering the forest saying, I'm marrying a serpent. I don't quite know what was possessing me to say this. What do I do? She was sitting as she said this by the roots of an old oak tree. From out of the center of the oak tree comes an old woman with a bobbing head and says this, you must prepare 12 wedding shirts. They're like night dresses, one after the other, and each of them you are to sew beautiful designs around the area of the heart where your heart will be. Then on the night of your wedding, wear each of the dresses to bed. Also bring into the chamber one great bath of milk, and one great bath of lye, also two great metal scrubbing brushes. That is the advice I give. And with that, the old woman disappeared back into the tree and is gone. The year and a day pass, she marries the serpent, even as the serpent wraps its tail around her. Rather than panicking like the other bride, she just looks over and says, yeah, that's my husband. They get into the chamber and he says, Take off your dress. She says, ah, ah, I'll take off one of my dresses if you take off one of your sets of scales. And he says, no one ever asked me to do that before. And he does it. And man, it's a painful thing. Much screaming. He says, Take off one of your dresses. I will if you take off one of your layers. You can imagine the furore. Hour after hour, layer after layer after layer, the serpent takes off his scales until finally underneath him, it's, it's, a, it's a little like a worm. It's this kind of glowing mass. There's a freaking mess. And it is then she gets out the scrubbing brushes. It is then she puts it in the lye, the water of ashes, and she starts to scrub on the flesh of this being. And if you thought he shrieked before, this was a whole other thing. Another hour she works on him until underneath that is indeed a man with a face that looks like he was sent into exile 17 years ago a man filled with ordinary beauty. And it's then she carries his body into the bath of milk and gradually she washes him clean. In the morning, the king and queen turn up and of course they're expecting the scene to be exactly like all the others, the bones everywhere and him saying older brothers marry first. They open the door to his chamber and what they see is a young man and a young woman in, as the Irish say, radiant contentment. And as far as I know, to this day, in that kingdom that is inside you and everywhere else as well, there is a woman with an educated heart and a man that learnt to shed his scales. <laughs>